The smart grid is a kind of electricity network that uses digital technology to control appliances in homes and businesses. Smart grids are being promoted by many governments as a way of addressing energy independence, global warming, and emergency resilience issues. With more on the future of the smart grid, we bring in Albert Chung. He's right beside me here. He works in the Bloomberg New Energy Finance team. He's the lead analyst for energy smart technologies. He's in town for the BNEF Summit. That's what we call your group, right, Albert? And later he's going to be making a presentation called Smart Grid, the Digitization of Energy. So it's really nice to see you here in New York. Usually we speak via satellite when you're in London. Who, who pays? Let's just start with that, right? We always like to follow the money trail for development in the smart grid. I mean, is it government? Is it industry? Is it both? Well, at the moment, actually, it's the utilities that have to invest in the smart grid. And that's because they are seeing uh, an increasing amount of renewable energy on the grid, increasing amount of rooftop solar on the grid, and they need to invest in intelligent devices in the grid right down to the building so that they can start to manage these resources more intelligently and make the grid more efficient and more reliable. So the idea is, I mean, this is a feedback, right? And this is what's new about the smart grid now, right? That's right, yeah. So traditionally, you have uh, energy supply and energy demand, and demand couldn't ever be controlled. The idea of the smart grid is that if you can intelligently reach into the home, reach into the building, and manage demand in real time, you can start to match that to the wind and solar plants, which are putting out power that's really unpredictable. So, Albert, I mean, if I want to go see a smart grid, can I do it? It's difficult, and the reason is, you know, you have the electric grid, and you have these intelligent devices that are being installed They're in every part chips, of the grid. Basically, chips, right? That's right, communication networks and chips. So. If that's what you get a kick out of, you can go there and see those. <laughs> that's what I want to do with my weekend yeah. time. All right. Now, I've read that the U.S. has already lost something like $80 billion uh, just kind of because of unreliability about, uh, about smart grid functioning. So if this is improved, what happens? Because you just told me utilities pay for it. But if I use more energy, then the utility company makes more money. So how is this a conflict of interest? Well, actually, in terms of reliability, there's no conflict at all. Because every time the lights go out, the utility is losing money. And not only that, but often they have a penalty for, for failing to deliver energy during those times. And so the more they can invest in intelligent networks that can heal themselves and heal those outages automatically, then the more money they save. For investors, Albert, which companies should we be sort of paying attention to more than others? Well, that's, it's really an interesting time in the smart grid industry. You've got a number of venture-backed young players that are reaching maturity right now. Companies like Silver Spring Networks, E-Meter, you know, on-ramp wireless. On the other side, you've got the large industrials like GE, Siemens, ABB, you know, even Cisco. Um, and right now, you know, to win a, a large utility smart grid contract, you've got to partner with four or five companies. You've got to form a consortium to win those contracts. Now, you said it's sort of a, a nexus, if you like. There's a crossroads right now in this development. So what could a smart grid look like in the near-term future? Well, in the near term, it's all about energy efficiency and reliability. In the long term, it's going to be a very different picture. We're going to have, you know, rooftop solar everywhere, electric vehicles plugging in, charging and discharging into the grid, batteries everywhere. And the smart grid is the system that's going to have to control and optimize all of those resources. Where does the resistance, because it all sounds great, but I assume there has to be resistance from somewhere. That's right. And so one of the major challenges right now is bringing the consumer on board with the idea of the smart grid. We've seen, especially in California, a lot of consumers saying, no, we don't want them. Um, Why not? People think that, that smart meters can increase your bills. They think that uh, there are health hazards to do with wireless communication. It's proven that, that these things are not true, but it's up to the utility companies now to regain the trust from those consumers and demonstrate to them that the benefits are real and tangible to them. All right, but it, when you say smart, it's kind of the same thing that we hear. Oh, if I talk a lot on a mobile phone, am I going to get a tumor? People have these same concerns with these monitoring devices in their homes. That's exactly right. That's the concern. But the studies have shown that the amount of wireless um, radiation coming from those smart meters in the home is actually orders of magnitude less than in mobile phones. All right, Albert. Well, good luck with your presentation. We're glad you came in to talk to us about it prior. This is Albert Chung. He is the lead analyst for Energy Smart Technologies at Bloomberg New Energy Finance Group.